Hey everybody, it's actor Moses Moser here from The Walking Dead, Queen of the South, uh, HBO Watchmen, a couple other things. And I just wanted to let you all know that I'm coming to the Lost World of Movie Props to speak with Ben, and I hope to see you all there. Hello everybody, my name's Ben Robbins and I'm from the Lost World of Movie Props and I'm here today with Moses J. Mosley. How did I pronounce that correctly? You did, man, you did. Uh, Moses Mosley, yes, sir. Uh-uh. Yes, I'm, I'm always messing up everyone's names when I introduce them. I finally got one right. <laughs> oh, good, man. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Thank, thank you for being on today. I really appreciate it. Um, I just want to talk about your career and lots of your projects you've got going on and just obviously t- we can talk and tell your fans all about yourself, really. Awesome. Awesome, man. Yeah, um, uh, man, it's, uh, I've been, like I said, I've been acting for about nine years now and it's been, it's been incredible, man. Um, uh, you know, I was on The Walking Dead. That was actually one of the first things I ever did career-wise. And um, yeah, The Walking Dead. Um, I recently was um, co-starring on the show um, U- on USA Queen of the South, uh, co-starred on HBO Watchmen, um, another uh, co-star BT American Soul. And uh, just two, um, three weeks ago, I just got done working on the, um, another BT show called Tales. And that'll be out in September. And um, uh, three days ago, I booked my first uh, radio commercial, man, for Pandora and uh, Pine Saw. So I'm really, um, I was really excited about that. And I just got done doing that. And um, yeah, man, I'm always just auditioning for new projects and stuff. And um, I have about three feature films I'm working on now that I still got to finish. And um, just auditioning, man, and just staying busy, man. And finally traveling again, you know, doing comic book conventions and stuff like that, too. And um, I also do writing. Um, I have um, my um, my recent book I just released. It just uh, I released it yesterday. It's called Your Life Is Meant to Be Easy, and um, that's on Amazon. And my um, my other book um, I Am is also on Amazon, and that's been um, circulating pretty well. But um, yeah, like um, writing is another one of my passions, man. Like I love inspiring people, and um, you know, writing about manifesting the life that you want, and um, just encouraging people and empowering them to go after whatever they want in life, man. Yeah, that's that's definitely one of my um, passions. Yeah. Awesome. That, that all sounds amazing. But uh, can we go right, right back to the beginning? Because you started off as a model, didn't you? I did. Yeah. Um, I started off doing print modeling and stuff. And this was after I lost weight because um, I don't know if you can tell, man, but I, I used to weigh 300 pounds. And, um, no way. After, yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, <laughs> and um, I lost it, you know, the natural way, you know, um, diet and exercise, lost 150 pounds. And um, ever since then, man, like I started modeling after that and um, just and acting just kind of came my way. You know, I got an opportunity walking out of class at Georgia State University and man, it's, and the rest is history, man. I've just been doing it ever since and, and I love it. I love it, man. I love it. Yeah. That's, so what was the first acting opportunity you got to do? The very first was, um, I don't know if you ever heard of the movie um, Joyful Noise with Queen Latifah and Dolly Parton. Um, yeah. I was, like I said, I, was, I came out of class one day and um, a girl, she was doing casting for, you know, background and, you know, um, feature background and stuff like that. And um, she pulled me to the side and asked me if I wanted to be in a movie, you know, and at first I was like, you know, what, like what kind of movie, you know, cause I wasn't familiar with acting and stuff. And I'm thinking, you know, some, it's, it could be in somebody's basement or something creepy or crazy, you know? So <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Something crazy, but yeah, it ended up be, um, being like a real movie, Joyful Noise. And um, I shot with them for a couple of days. I did it. Um, it was a, a club scene they had where I was, you know, acting like I was one of the kids, you know, clubbing and having fun, you know, with, um, you know, Kiki Palmer and stuff in the club. And uh, yeah, I did that with them, man. They just started sending me more and more breakdowns and submissions and I was hooked, man, and just worked my way up from there. Yeah. Man, that, that sounds awesome. So so when did the, the Walking Dead come into your life? Like, how did you get the role for that? Oh, man, it was so crazy. Um, that was actually the third thing I ever did um, career wise. And um, it was um, they uh, and, uh, it was uh, basically I was just at the time just looking for stuff to, you know, add to my resume, you know, and I was, you know, Googling um, casting calls and stuff. And um, I had no, well, first of all, I had no idea what The Walking Dead was. I never heard of it, never knew about the comic books, nothing. And then I just saw the show and I was like, okay, well, um, I just saw one of the breakdowns for it. And I was like, okay, I'll just, you know, submit my stuff through the mail, you know, because they were at the back then they had um, a way you could submit your um, your resume and your um, headshot and stuff through the mail. So I ended up doing that. And a couple of weeks later, man, around 4 a.m., they called me at 4 a.m. And they were like, hey, man, this, um, this part just opened up. Do you want it? You know, and at first I thought I dreamed it, you know, when I woke up in the morning, I was like, okay, there's no way that happens. So I was like, okay. And I checked my email and it was a confirmation about where I need to go and what time. And I was like, okay, that really did happen. You know, awesome. You know, <laughs> um, yeah. So um, that next day I ended up going down there to the studio where they were shooting in Sonoya. And, you know, they walked me through everything. I was like, okay, this is what we need you to do. You know, are you still interested? And I was like, you know, sure. 
and I ended up shooting with them for about two, three weeks. And um, after, I, you know, I got done, I was like, okay, well, you know, that, that was, that was fun, you know, and um, I kind of just forgot about it. But then I would have mm-hmm. random people coming up to me, like, you know, do you know who you were? You know, like you were important. I was like, okay, I was a zombie. Like, you know, like what's the big deal, you know? Cause I didn't know about the show. You know, I had no idea, you know, what it was. So, you know, after it finally came out and I watched the other seasons, cause I, I came out in season three, I watched the other seasons and I was hooked. And then I knew like, okay, then I got into the comic books too. And I was like, no way, that's who I was getting okay, now. Okay, I get it now, you know? And ever since then, man, I was hooked on the show. But yeah, it was, um, it was, it was so fun and so exciting. And I learned so much from being on it because I was, I was still fresh with movies. You know, I wasn't, you know, familiar with working on movies and stuff and TV shows. And I was learning so much stuff about, you know, special effects and how they shoot stuff. And like, it, it was more of like, it was, it wasn't only an exciting opportunity, but it was educational for me too. And, yeah. you know, everybody on the set is so cool and so down to earth and awesome. And, you know, I learned so much from so many people and it was, it was incredible, man. It was just incredible. Yeah. So do you remember your, like your, your first thoughts and feelings and impressions when you walked onto set and saw it all laid out? What was that like? It was, it was intense. Cause like, you know, I'm seeing all, you know, they, they have it down to like a science, you know, it's like so many people like on set, you know, sometimes hundreds of people running back and forth and, you know, doing everything. And I'm just like observing, like, you know, and just seeing you know, how everything works and just learning, you know, and um, it was like somewhat overwhelming, but it was exciting, you know, cause so much yeah. energy and just, you know, so much, you know, skill and, pre- and precision, you know, even with the makeup artists, you know, like, um, uh, uh, I know Kevin Wasner, and um and uh, um and, and you know and it was just like how he was working on me and like how they explained to me you know Greg Nicotero like you know he did all the paper pencil designs and like how they were explaining to me like you know we're gonna add this to you and it's gonna look like we're taking stuff away and I'm like okay you're gonna cut my arms off in my jaw and I'm like okay you know uh, you know I was like okay, what did I sign up for for me and I was like wait a minute you know? but then they were like no you're gonna see how it's gonna work and um just watching them work and man it was just it was so amazing like they're like artists like they know that they're so good at what they do you know it was just incredible you know it was incredible yeah so, so how long did it take them to do all your makeup and all your wardrobe and that was it a slow process to do it was um it was it took about two and a half hours to do the makeup every day and it's like literally like it's like it, they got it down to a science. Like I said, man, it's like they sit you down. You're waking up at 4 a.m. in the morning. You know, you're groggy and stuff. They sit you down. They're like, OK, be as still as you can while we're working on you. You know, you have still people going back and forth and like one person adding this, one person's taking this away. And it's like they have it down. It's like an assembly line. Basically, they just like they know exactly how to do and what to do. And it was just like, yeah, two and a half hours every day, like I said. But like, yeah, they do, they have it down to a science, man. Like they, they, they know what they're doing. Yeah, they know what they're doing. Yeah. <laughs> Because yeah. uh, obviously part of your character, we see you with a big metal cast around your neck and the big metal chain. Was that uncomfortable to wear or was it quite pleasant? <laughs> At first it was really uncomfortable, man. Like it, and it was really weighted too. And like, you know, in between scenes and stuff, you know, like you see like, you know, Michonne, she was really pulling us, you know. So like, she, but she was not only just pulling us, she was actually showing us where to go because we were completely blind. Like we had okay. um, marble lenses over our eyes. So like when we were walking in the woods and stuff and around and stuff, we didn't know, we, didn't, we couldn't see anything. So she was like not only tugging us to, you know, direct us and, you know, to look good, but it was actually showing us where to go, you know, because we were really her pets, you know, like we couldn't see anything, you know. So it was like she was guiding us and it was you know, it was like so funny because like in between takes when, you know, the director said cut. She's like, yeah, was that OK, guys? Was that too hard? Y'all OK? We're like, you know, we're fine. You're, fine. you're awesome. Like, just, you just go for it, you know. But yeah, she's like, nice. she's amazing. Like, she's so nice and so down to earth, like just incredible person and so talented. Yeah, incredible. Yeah. Is she really as badass with a sword in real life? Yeah, yeah, man. She knows what she's doing with that thing, man. Like, <laughs> she just, like swings and stuff. She's definitely trained, man. Like, she's she's incredible. She's she's really awesome. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, obviously, because when we see your character, you've got no arms and no jaw, like you said. I mean, um, how do you get in the, the mental zone as a, a zombie? How do you prep yourself to walk and talk like a zombie? For me, it was like, literally, I listened to what Greg Nicotero said. You know, he, like, he explained it to the point where, like, in my mind, I would have never been able to make sense out of it. But how he explained it was perfect. He literally said, okay, imagine it's 4 a.m. or 3 a.m. You're drunk and you just left the party. You're trying to find your car keys. And literally when you do it, it's like, you know, you're moving like you're a zombie, you know, it's like, and it it looks perfect. And I just remember that every single time it's like, dumb yourself down. You're drunk. You know, you're trying to find your car keys and (laughs) knocking your head back and forth. And like, it looks so good. Like it works perfectly, man. It works perfectly. Yeah. Definitely. Because I mean, on, the, on the set of The Walking Dead, all the cast members know when they're going to get killed and written out. Did you know you were only going to be a, a specific time or did you think you'd be longer? Did you know you were going to get killed off? No, I didn't. I found out that day, you know, I found out that day, you know, what was um what was going to happen, you know. And um for me, it was like because, you know, I didn't develop a love for the show just yet. 
because I wasn't familiar with it. So for me, it was just like, you know, you know, thank you for the opportunity. It was exciting, you know, and I was just so ready to see it and to just, you know, move on to the next thing so I could keep on learning and, you know, building up my, um, you know, my, my resume and everything. But yeah, like it was like, I, I didn't, I had no idea what was going on, you know, at the time, because I still, I wasn't familiar with anything and I was just there just to, you know, learn and just, you know, offer whatever I could. But yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I mean, because I mean, at the time, did you realize you were playing quite a significant zombie? Because we learned through you guys that mm-hmm. obviously it's zombies use their smell as well to obviously find right. living people and dead people, then, but people could disguise themselves with dead zombies. Did you realize that at the time? Is that I had no idea, man. No idea. Like, like I said, like I would have random people coming up to me saying, like, you know, you know, do you know who you were? You were important. It's like, okay, all right, whatever. You know, it's like because you don't know how to break that because you don't know anything about the show, you know. So it's like, okay, cool, you know, I'll, all right, you know, thanks, you know, you know, clearly you're excited about it. So thank you. You know, I appreciate it. <laughs> but yeah, it's like later on, you know, I appreciated it more than I was when I actually worked on it because I didn't know anything about the show, like you said, you know, but um later on, like it was such a humbling experience, and I'm like so thankful that I got a chance to, you know, be a part of it because I feel like it started pretty much everything for me, you know, and I got a chance yeah. to get my name out there and everything. And I learned so much from it. So I'm, I'm eternally grateful, man. Definitely. Yeah. Because I mean, obviously The Walking Dead opened up more doors for you, like um, The Hunger Games. Can you tell us about yeah. The Hunger Games and what that was like? Because that's such wow, a big man. franchise now still. It was so exciting, man, because um, I think The Hunger Games was like the fourth thing I ever did. I think it was like right after Walking Dead pretty much. And um, it was incredible. Like, you know, because my scene, like, you know, it was really intense. You know, I played one of the District 11 citizens that was, um, you know, during a revolt when, you know, the, the peacekeepers were trying to execute the little girl on stage, you know. So yeah. for me, it was like it was really like intense because the Hunger Games, I never knew about them either. You know, it was just another thing <laughs> I went on. I, I didn't man, a majority of stuff I, I worked on. I had no idea what it is until later on. I go back and watch it, you know, for research or whatever. But um, yeah, like for that, it was it was really awesome. You know, like I got a chance to meet. Um, I know a lot of um, great actors. Um. I didn't get a chance to meet um, Jennifer uh, Jennifer Lawrence. I love her. Like, oh, she's amazing. I got to meet her, and that sucks. But I got a chance to meet Josh um, Hart and um, uh, and the other um, other one of the other guy main guys, and um, and they were really awesome, really really cool people. And um, just being on that set was so intense too, you know. And it was yeah. it was really exciting, man. It was really exciting. Yeah, yeah. Because um, obviously, I, a personal favorite of mine was Homicide Hunters. Can you tell us about that as well? Because I've I've watched all that now, and I'm I'm really yeah, jealous. Yeah. Of you part of that <laughs> dude that was so much fun like that was actually the second speaking role i ever got and um you know again i was like still more familiar with acting and stuff um, i was getting more familiar with acting but i still wasn't where i am now but um yeah it was really fun you know we shot it in um kentucky and um it was just you know getting a chance to be a part of that and like you know learning how like i had no idea how big of a following you know it has because like i still have people to this day and, and when i shot it back in uh, i think like 2014 People still to this day, you know, message me online and say, I just saw you on uh, Lieutenant Joe Kinder show. I was like, he said, I saw you get stabbed a bunch of times. Like you were messing around with my wife, you know. And I was like, Yeah, that's awesome. Like this, you know, they still follow it, you know. But um, it was a lot of fun. Like, again, I learned a lot about special effects and stuff and like how to like um, you know, like really sell being killed and stuff and you know, doing doing the scenes over and over again and proper placing and stuff. And um, it, it was it was so fun. And and uh, Joe Kinder, he's so cool, like he's such a laid back, cool guy, man. Like, because I got a chance to meet him on set too, and he was oh, really, nice. awesome. really awesome, man. Really awesome, yeah, yeah. I mean, so how do you go through a process pretending to be killed? Because we, we've all pretended to do it when we're younger, but how professionally, yeah. how do you mentally in process and do that sort of thing on on, on camera? For for me, I take in the scene, like you know what's happening, and um, you know, I try to make sense out of it. You know, it's like you know when you get shot, you know, sometimes depending on where you get shot, like say if you get shot, well, if you ever seen um Queen of the South on USA Network, you'll see me get shot in the neck. You know, so it's like you know for that, it's like it's a different kind of process, but it's just understanding exactly what part of your body is being affected and what objects being used. Like with Joe Kendall, like I, I got stabbed twenty times. You know, so it's like, you know, you're not instantly going to get killed when you stab, when you get, you know, shot, when you get killed, when you get stabbed or whatever, you're not instantly going to die. So it's like, you know, really selling in and stuff and like, you know, jerking motions. And, you know, if you're trying to resist, you know, like try to resist, you know, the person stabbing you. And like, you know, even with them, like they even taught me how to pro- properly spit blood, you know, because it's it like a slow <laughs> process, you know. And it was like, um, like I have like an old video, I, I hope I think I still have it, where they actually like showed me like literally like the butt, blood slowly coming out of my mouth. And like, it was like blood 
blood bubbles and stuff popping out. And like <laughs> one of the blood bubbles actually exploded, like when I was like, you know, in the midst of spitting it out. And it looked so cool in slow motion, like, you know, for the moment, you know, for that, for the role, you know, but not in yeah. real life, you know, but yeah, like um, <laughs> it was really fun, like, um, you know, just slowly like animating the process and making sure enough blood is dripping down slowly, you know, because like in between takes, they'll put blood in your mouth to show like it's slowly dripping out, you know, so you got to spit that out put some more in, do it again, spit it out, put some more in, do it again. It's like pretty much lather, rinse, repeat. You know, it's like just animating the the scene to make it look real as possible, you know? So it's just, you know, understanding what's happening to you, understanding exactly who's all involved and just putting it all together to make it make sense. It's like a choreography pretty much. Yeah. 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 So obviously learning dialogue then, has that been a bit more of a challenge or has that been fun to do learning dialogue and putting that into play? Starting out, man, like when I started getting speaking roles, it, it, it terrified me because like I'm watching these movies and this is before I knew, you know, the actual process. I'm watching these movies and I'm like hearing so like I'm what's these people say so much stuff. And I'm like, how do they remember that? You know, but it was like before. But, but it was before I realized that the scenes are cut. They know which to focus on for that day or for that hour. So it's like you're not having to remember all of this stuff, you know, in, in one take. You know, you don't it's not yeah. the way it was, you know. So for me, it was, it's like a slow kind of process. It's like you go through one scene, remember one line for that moment, remember another line, go back to the first line, do the second line, go to the third line, go back to the first line, second, third. It's pretty much A, B, B, A, B, B, A, B, B, A, B, B, C, A, B, B, C, A, B, B, C, C, B, A, C, B, A. And it's like, when you constantly yeah. do the repetition and, you know, um, and, uh, you know, reiterate it, it's like the, pretty much the words get stuck in your head. And then once you um, get familiar with the words, then you can go back and um, go to get, get with the choreography of it all. And then the choreography is gonna help you remember the words even more because as you're walking through the motions, it's like muscle memory. You know, it's like, as you're walking through the motions, it's like, now I remember this line because I was over here when I said this. And it's like, it pretty much like, the more you do it, the easier it's gonna get for you to, um, to, 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 to memorize it. Cause now I can, I can memorize a script like in like, in like five minutes, you know, pretty much. Cause it's like, I got it down to a science, you know, like, and before I even start um, memorizing lines, I'll read the script at least three times. I'll read it, you know, three times just to understand what's going on, what role everybody plays and what role do I play. Then I'll read it again to um, see exactly who I am, how I'm affecting everybody and, you know, what my role in this is. Then I'll read it again to start memorizing and I memorizing the lines and I'll break each scene down. So I'm not trying to remember it all just, you know, flat out because that's that's when it gets difficult. So I'll break yeah. it down per scene and then I'll remember it per scene and, uh, you know, just lather, rinse, repeat. Man. Yeah, yeah. So on, on Attack of the, the Southern Fried Zombie film that you did, yeah, yeah. so obviously you've got the dialogue and the acting, but um, what's it like being the one that's killing the zombies this time, not being a zombie being killed? How was that switching roles? Man, it was exciting, man, because like I said, I'm used to, you know, being the dead guy, you know, so like to get a chance you know, to be, a, you know, one of the heroes, it was so fun. Um, you know, um, that was another one I, we shot in Mississippi for about three weeks and it was so fun. Like it was really exciting. And, you know, me and all the cast, like we really bonded and really got close and like we're still friends to this day, you know, so it was it was such a fun and exciting opportunity. And um, it was like. For me, it was like, it was so much more fun because now I'm getting a chance, you know, to shoot and stuff and run and, you know, like really, you know, feel like I'm trying to survive, but, you know, an apocalypse kind of thing, you know, so it was just, it was really exciting, really intense, man. Yeah, yeah. So uh, was it like using one of the prop guns on set and having to shoot someone? What's that like? It's really fun, man, because it's like, you know, you're, you know, you're animating the motions because, you know, you're not really like, in, in most cases, like you're not really going to like be actually shooting a gun, you know, you're going to just be animating it. So it's yeah. like you got to, you know, you are taking consideration for the recall, you know, make sure your body's jerking right. And, you know, you got to make sure, you know, you're properly animated, you know, as far as like acting like, you, you know, you're really shooting a gun and stuff, you know, and, some, and there's like a lot of, you know, um, training that goes with it, you know, making sure you're holding it right, you know, making sure like you're properly, you know, uh, um, resisting, you know, with the recoil and stuff. And it was just really fun learning how to do all that stuff, man. Like it was, it was really exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So um, move, moving away from the films and TV a bit, because um, you're very active on social media. I mean, you've got your own yeah. YouTube channel. Do you want to tell us about your YouTube channel while you set that up? Yes. Um, 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 I got to get more, I got to get better with that, you know, like, um, cause I'm, I'm like, I, if that's one aspect of my social media. Like I'm not as advent as I should be, you know, but I'm working on it, man. But, um, yeah, like I, I try to post my, my motivational stuff and, you know, I post, you know, when I do like, um, autograph signings through the mail and stuff and, you know, I, you know, post my reels and everything. And I try to like engage with people. And, um, you know, like I said, like just, I'm, cause I'm heavy into manifesting the life you want and, you know, positivity and keeping people uplifted. So I try to utilize, 
you know, that platform along with my other platforms to, you know, spread positivity and, you know, really encourage people and keep people uplifted. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to start um, doing a podcast with the other um, um, Pet Walker to say West. He's actually a director now, too. And um, yeah. I'm starting a podcast about, you know, manifesting life you want and, you know, uplifting people and um, being, you know, creative and utilizing the gifts that you have. And um, that's another um, thing we're, um, that we want to start. And it's just something that I have a really a big passion about, you know, like I told you with my writing and my books, that's what I write about. You know, I write about, you know, positivity. I write about mind science and, you know, showing people like, you know, it doesn't matter where you come from. It just matters where you're going. And it all starts in the mind. You know, as long as you get your mind and your heart in the right place, you can do anything, you know. And, and that's really what I try to spread with my um, social media and, you know, YouTube channels and platforms, man. Because uh, what I really loved about your YouTube channel, and I got a lot of respect for you for doing it, because yeah. you went live at a Black Lives Matter protest. I did. And you, I did. It, yeah. and, and yeah. you showed how peaceful it was and how professional it was all being run. Exactly. And a lot of, lot of people in your position wouldn't do that. And I really right. loved the fact you did that. Thank you. Thank you. And that's, um, you know, another one of my passions, you know, it's like I went to it, you know, in solidarity, you know, to, to stand with people who, you know, that they, who are against these injustices, you know, because that's what it's about. You know, it's like it's not about, you know, like the way the media tried to portray it, like we were out, you know, um, uh, ransacking the, um, the city that we were out, you know. Uh, you know, fighting and, and turnover conquest, that, that wasn't us, you know, we yeah. were there peacefully, we were there talking, we were there uplifting each other. And that was the side that in a lot of cases, the media outlets weren't showing you. So that was really my main goal to get out and show people like, it's not what you see on the news, you know, this is peaceful, we're coming together peacefully to try to solve these things peacefully, you know, that's yeah. what it's about, you know, and that's really the main reason why I went out. And um, I feel like I, I helped, you know, spread that positivity and let people know, you know, not, it's not everything's the way they put it on the news, you know, that there's a, yeah. they have their agenda, but this is the truth, you know, and that's really what I wanted to um, help spread, man. Yeah. Because uh, cause when I was doing my research on you, I've noticed you've, you've done a few roles where it involves American Black history. Was that something yeah. you specifically chosen or is it roles you've fallen into? It's, um, for me, it's like I never really go into, you know, the roles like expecting one thing in particular, because, you know, like I, first it was, you know, horror. Now I'm like branching off and doing other things. And like me, I love diversification. I love, you know, having a broad, you know, resume and a lot of, um, you know, a, a difference, you know, a difference of repertoire, you know. And yeah. it's just something that kind of just happened, you know. It's like, of course, it's one of my passions. But at the same time, you know, it's like, it's just, I never really plan for anything like that. You know, I just go in, do the best job I can and hope for the best, you know, and it's just something that kind of just came my way. Yeah. 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 That's really awesome, man. We saw it in the UK. So yeah, it's spread it quite far. <laughs> thank you, man. Awesome, man. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. So, I mean, you've, you've also got your own website as well, which I've checked out. Yeah. You've got your bio on there and you, you sell your own merchandise. Do you want to talk us through your merchandise that people can buy from you? Definitely. Um, I have, um, you know, my autographs and stuff, you know, and um, certain prints anybody would like. Um, I have my books uh, on there. I got to put my new book on there right now. That one's on Amazon, but I have my old book on there that I sell um, signed copies of. Um, I um, do face masks and stuff and like, um, I, and also provide um, uh, my email address so people will have like action figures with me on them. They can send them to me and I'll sign them and stuff as well. And um, yeah, I just, another platform I just use to, you know, help people get some of the items and stuff that they want and help, you know, communicate with me better and, you know, just really just try to bring people together, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So if, when people purchase an autograph from your site, um, will you personalize that all for free? Or was that extra or is it just a set fee? It's just a set fee. Like I'll personalize it, no problem. Like just all you gotta do is let me know how you what you want me to write on it, and I'll do it, no problem at all, man. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, yeah. So obviously, because you've you've mentioned your book a few times, um, when did you first realize that you wanted to write a book and publish a book? It's something that I always wanted to do, but I didn't know what I wanted to talk about. But yeah. it, it literally two years ago, I got into. Uh, mind science. I got into, you know, um, you know, uh, reprogramming the mind because, you know, I, you know, I, I come from a situation where that isn't taught, you know, so it's like when I learned it, I felt like there was this was the answer to everything. You know, I felt like the clouds were opening up and you know, the sunlight was just shining, you know, because like all my life, I always felt like there was something I was missing in terms of, you know, the Bible, in terms of religion and everything like that. And it's like, and, it, and it's mind science. That's what the truth about life is. It's like you become who you think you are. You become... Yeah how you feel and you don't have to wait for something to happen to decide how you want to feel. And like, I've been studying this for the past two going on three years now. And when I realized like, this is, I have a deep passion for it. I realized, okay, I want to write about it now because the best writing comes from the stuff that you believe in. You know, you write what you believe in, you write what you enjoy. And um, that's, that's really what it, the light switch was for me. It's like, okay, you're studying this stuff. You, you love it. This is the reason why 
everything in your life is going so amazing now, write about it and spread it and show other people that they can do the same thing. And that's what I've, I'm, I'm really, um, that's what I decided to focus on, man. Cause that's, I, I write about it all day. Like I'm probably going to do a third book on it. Like I said, my second book just came out. I just did that one and I know I'm going to do another one about it. And um, yeah, like that's pretty much what it is for me, man. It's like, it's been a life changing game changing thing for me. And I just want to spread it to everybody and let everybody know, like, all you have to do is get your mind in order, your heart in order, and the world is going to do whatever you want. You know, like it, the, yeah. the, world, the world will bend to you if you get these two things in order, you know, and, and that's all it is. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So have you got any quotes you want to say to any of your fans that are going to see this? Is there anything you want to say with a quote? Oh, man, just um, just gratitude, just eternal gratitude for, you know, all the support and all the love and stuff. And, um, you know, just, you know, if you guys want to reach me, you know, I'm always active on my social media. You know, you go to my website, MosesMosley.com. You know, you can look at my books, Amazon, uh, on Amazon, it's, um, on Amazon and Amazon Kindle. And, uh, you know, if anybody, you know, wants to reach out to me, if they need advice on acting or just life in general, message me and I, and I always eventually respond to everybody that I can and um, just stay uplifted, stay positive, you know, like the world is your oyster. And I don't say that as a cliche. I literally mean it because it's true. You know, when you realize like when you get your mind in order, when you get your heart in order, everything else is just easy. You know, it's like once you get once you get your proper thinking, once you get your emotions in check, you know, you can conquer the universe, you know, and that's literally what it is. You know, it's like, we can all be happy. No person has to get something taken away for them for the other person to, you know, to, to, to have, to have abundance, you know, there's a, and there's enough for all of us to be abundant. Don't listen to the news when they say there's a shortage of anything. It's a lie. There's, there's infinite amounts of everything in the world, you know, like just, 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 just believe in it. Just, just believe, like ignore the negativity, get away from it cut it out of your life. It's, 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 it's nothing. It's a distraction. Focus on the positivity, get your mind, get your heart in order. You can do anything. Yes. Yes. Mm -mm. I mean, looking for your website, people can book you to come to conventions and stuff. And so yeah. recently you, you went back to a convention and uh, you got to meet fans again. How was that like? It was incredible, man. Cause you know, with um, um, Corona, with um, COVID and Corona you know, virus, you know, everything was shut down, you know, so to get a chance to get out and, you know, meet fans again and, you know, just be sociable. Like it was incredible, man. And like um, the event was called the camp and it was so amazing. Like there were so many people that came out, man. It, it was such a fun time. It was really exciting. Like, but I'm just so glad I got a chance to get out again and, you know, get things back to somewhat normal, you know, so definitely. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. So uh, what's your next future project coming up? Have you got anything, any cheeky plugs you want to put on quickly? Man, like oh, I have about three, <laughs> yeah, I have about three movies I'm working on, man. Um, uh, one I got to finish um, called um, Hank, which is kind of like a Final Destination kind of thing. And um, hopefully I'll finish that um, soon. Um, I'm working on another one in Texas called um, The Blues Man. And it's uh, about um, Robert Johnson. If you don't know who um, he is, he's an um, old school blues legend. He pretty much started rock and roll. And um, it's a, a movie a lot about him and, you know, some of the mythology behind him. Um, I got like another horror movie I'm working on. Um, and um, oh God, I forgot, uh, St. Louis, I believe. Um, I just got done working on a um, BET show called Tales. Had a co-star role in that and I um, worked with them for about a week, a, a week and a half. And that was incredible. And hopefully that'll be out around September. Um, I, like I said, I, um, just three days ago, I did my first radio um, commercial for um, Pandora and Pine Saw Cleaner, and that'll probably be out um, soon, too. And um, yeah, man, just things are picking back up and I'm just really excited and um, everything's coming out soon. And um, uh, if you follow me, um, I'll be posting about everything as soon as it comes out. And yeah, man, like I'll, um, I'm just really looking forward to it, man. And I always auditioning for new stuff, too. So, yeah, man, we're working. We're working. Yeah. <laughs> So obviously some of the subjects I like to bring up at the end of, end of my talks is um, I like to ask like three separate questions. Um, one of them is um, what was the favorite set that you've worked on TV or film? Oh, that's tough, man. That's so hard. Uh, oh my <laughs> God. Um, I, I'll say it's still just because it's so close to my heart walking dead, you know, and, and it pretty much, pretty much it started my, you know, career and everything. And the fact that I'm in the fact that I'm still involved in it, you know, it's just like, it's been a godsend for me, you know, because, you know, it's, it's one of those gifts that keeps on giving, you know, because I'm always doing conventions, you know, always meeting people through Walking Dead. You know, no matter what I've, whatever, no matter what I've done, what I'm doing now, it's still, it always ends back to Walking Dead, man. So that was probably definitely like probably my, my favorite and um, Queen of the South too, you know, um, USA Network, like that was, that was, that was a really exciting opportunity for me because it's the first time I got a chance to work in um, New Orleans. So I was really happy about that. And just this past one I did, man, the um, BT Tail Show, that was, that that was so it's a lot bigger than I knew it was going to be, you know, and um, 
I'm just can't wait for that to come out because hopefully it'll be out around September. But um, if I was to choose one, probably Walking Dead, man. It's just because it's so close to my heart, man. It's it's, it's hard to choose just one, but yeah, Walking Dead because it's it, it's it's changed it changed everything for me. So yeah, definitely, definitely. And then my second one is, and what was the your most favorite wardrobe to wear or makeup or costume? What was the, your most favorite? Wow. Okay. Oh man, that's tough. Oh my god. Okay, favorite wardrobe. Ugh. Probably again, I'll say Walking Dead, man, because like it, <laughs> there's like so much stuff like went into, you know, the prosthetics and the and the makeup and everything. And it was just like, you know, t- t- it took them two and a half hours to make me up every day, you know. So I like I really appreciate, you know, the craft that went into it, man. It was just like it, it was intense. It was intense, like in, insanely amazing, you know. So, yeah, like I, I've worn some pretty cool stuff, but like I say, like still Walking Dead, man, tops it off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and the last question would be, um, what was your favorite prop to use? Is there a certain prop you used and you just thought it was really awesome to use and it was just fun? And Real first prop, uh, my favorite prop, um, probably, probably the guns I get to use. Like, it's like, it's so much like fun, like, you know, <laughs> animating, like, you know, like you're, like you're shooting and stuff and running and really intense. Like with Queen of the South, like, you know, it was really fun. Like, you know, you know, shooting around and like adding like I'm shooting people and like, you know, pretendly you know and like you know you're shooting around like because like so much adrenaline going on and you know even with um attack of the southern fried zombies you know like i had like an automatic gun i was using and stuff and like running around like a military kind of really animated thing and like yeah like definitely like, definitely guns man it's, it's fun exciting yeah and the crowbar and the crowbar i had in there too was pretty cool yeah <laughs> yeah uh, and my, my final question before we leave you and let you carry on with your day um no I've got to look back at the Watchmen and how was yeah, it being yeah. on? How was it being on the Watchmen? And do you reckon there'd be another season? Or I hope they do have another season because, like, the way they ended it was so poetic and so amazing. So I understand they don't want to do another one, but I hope they do. But it was a limited series, so you know, you never know. But Watchmen was incredible, like, because I'm I was a big fan of the movie, you know, and so um, when I got a chance to be on the show you know, it, that was another one. I keep forgetting how amazing it was. Like, it was so much fun. Thank you for reminding me. Yeah. But, um, you know, my scene, like they turned me to a hologram, you know, and, um, I had like a full monologue that I, um, that I had to do. And when we were shooting it, I had to balance myself on top of a beam that was like 10 feet up. And I had to deliver my monologue to a red X that was across the room. And it was an emotional monologue. So this was the moment where I actually felt like a real actor, man. Cause it's like, I have, I'm balancing myself on a beam. I have to deliver emotional lines not looking at anybody but a red X that's on the wall, you know, and I have to deliver my lines to a red X on the wall, you know, so I had to take myself to an emotional place. And on top of that, I'm, I'm betraying a, a person like in the 1930s that's, you know, you know, just witnessed, um, you know, um, you know, Tulsa massacre, you know, it was a traumatic, terrible event in history that a lot of people are just now finding out about, you know, and um, to have to be that emotional and that animated while still balancing on a beam in the air where if I fall, I was going to fall for a minute, you know, like it's going to hurt <laughs> getting a chance to do that it just if it, it felt like I was I, I, that was the moment where I felt like I became a real actor because like I'm actually having to try now you know and it's like it was it was amazing like really amazing like, I only shot for them for like two days though but um it was just an incredible incredible opportunity because I like I said again I had to try you know like I really it took effort you know and um it, it was amazing it was it was so exciting so exciting man yeah yeah did you did you know the ending when it was going to happen and what was going to happen or did you wait like the rest of us and find out Man, like I had, I had, like I knew, I knew some bits and pieces, but it was like, it was like I didn't know exactly how it was gonna turn out, you know. It's like, but but for the most part, I had to wait too, because I only knew what was going on for that couple of episodes, you know. So, but um, I had to wait to find out exactly how it ended, and when I saw it, I was like, holy crap, you know. Like I had a theory <laughs> that that's how it was gonna go, but I didn't know how we were gonna get there, you know. But when I saw it, I was like, wow, like it was like it's so. It, how it was so amazing like it's so much inference that you can imply because we don't actually see her you know walk on the water but we know that's probably what she's able to do now you know because she's you know probably knew that man you know so it was i think it was the writing man was just incredible like i hope for wh- how somehow they they do another season but like i just i appreciate the acting that the the the, the writing so much like what makes a great show amazing is a writing man and just like they they just killed it they just it was so good they killed it yeah yeah so if you had to pick i would be marvel dc who would you be oh dude i can pick my arm man <laughs> i'm a huge marvel and dc fan and like but i'm a big superman fan superman's dc so i, I gotta run with dc man yeah man. <laughs> i'm dc as well so there you go bro there you go man <laughs> awesome man
Uh, well, Moses, thank you so much for being on today. I know it was just a quick talk with you, and I really appreciate your time and coming on and sharing some of your stories. And I will obviously I will put up all the links to your website, and and we get you. your book up on here as well, and everything. And I just want to say thank you so much for being on here today. You're eternally grateful, man. Thanks for having me, man. Thank you, thank you. Cool. Thank you. We're here. Awesome. Cool.